Hi, and welcome to Dice Friends. You may have noticed that this isn't our traditional setup for this thing. One, I'm in the storyteller chair, and two, we're all spread out. That's because we are adhering to the provincial guidelines for film and television here in BC. We're filming Dice Friends at the Belfry Theater in Victoria. You can see that we are all well and socially distanced. We are being incredibly safe in order to make sure that this content is the best that it can be for you. Thank you. And welcome to a special presentation of Dice Friends. My name is Jacob Burgess. It is my pleasure to be your storyteller for Loading Ready Run's very first foray into the world of darkness in this chronicle, which is titled, Not a Drop to Drink, A Tale of Vancouver Island by Night, played, as I said, in Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. I am absolutely overjoyed as somebody who has written for Vampire and has been playing Vampire since he was 16 years old, as it was a game that quite literally saved my life at that time. I get the distinct honor and pleasure to share it with you and to share it with the other wonderful, fantastic motherfuckers at this table. Let's meet them now. Sir, would you introduce yourself to the audience and people that may not know you, especially new and old members of the family. Hi, my name is Cameron Lauder, and I am a writer and actor and streamer with Loading Ready Run. I, uh, I, I am a pile of rat kings in a sweater. <laughs> that, that, that's basically me. With um, really good hair. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Slap the mic. Yeah, just slap the mic. Bam. <laughs> Would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the audience who may not know you? Uh, my name is Heather Deary. I work with Loading Ready Run, uh, mostly through the YouTube management and uh, a lot of behind the scenes things. So I haven't been on camera in a while, so this is exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm nervous and excited, but I feel like they most might be the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ner nerve excitement. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, me? Yes. I'm Coriander Dickinson. Yeah. I work with Loading Ready Run, and in my free time, I make my friends watch Common Rider. She does. Not Rare Rider? No. <laughs> Fair. It's a lesser product. Mm -hmm. Sir? Hi, my name is Adam Savadan. Uh, I'm also a member of Loading Ready Run. Uh, I've been doing it for a few years full time now. It's pretty neat to get to hang out with my friends, and now I get to experience the role of vampire for the first time, which mm -hmm. is. Uh, I'm, I don't want to like. I don't want to say hesitant, like it's a bad thing, but okay. it's just like, it's it's different. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it's a different setting than what I would normally consume. So I'm excited to get into it. Ah, uh, I like that you said consume. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Thank you everybody for trusting me to run this game for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not caught it, uh, I highly recommend watching session zero, going back and watching session zero. That's the creation of the characters. We're gonna take care of one last little bit of housekeeping at the top of this episode, and then we're going to dive right in. So, one of the very last things, and I wanted to save this for the last, and I wanted to do it right at the top of the first session. There is something, while you are all monsters, you are all vampires, you are people that were embraced and taken into the night for reasons known only to your sire, the one that created you. You exist in the world of darkness. We are playing on Vancouver Island. We are currently in Victoria, BC. This is where we all live. This is where we all exist. You are all familiar with this place, but you will recognize and 
at the same time not recognize this world that we're playing in. The world of darkness is one in which monsters are real, but they've always been hidden, always in the background. Every once in a while, something will happen that will bring it to the forefront, but through collective disbelief or conspiracy, that's covered up and brought into the background. Everybody in the world of darkness is on edge. It's been described before, as I described it in Session Zero, uh, kind of as a gothic punk setting. Sort of. It really depends on the table that you're at and where you're running. But the world of darkness is one in which the moon is always fuller, the shadows a little bit longer, the howls in the night just a touch more piercing because you do not know what is out there in the dark. Except that you do because you are the ones that are out there in the dark. One of the themes of Vampire the Masquerade is beast I am lest beast I become. It is a pull between the beast inside you that hungers and fears and slavers for that thick, delicious red liquid pumping through each one of our veins at this table. And your humanity, who you are as a person, now, I say humanity, that doesn't necessarily mean goodness. It doesn't mean you're a good person, but you hold on to the thing that makes you human. But what makes your characters human? So first, before we launch into this, let's start with a round of names. What are your characters' names? Adam. Hi. Be first. Yeah. Tell us about your character. Uh, my character's name is Oliver Tyndall. Oh. He's a, <laughs> he's a uh, 60 year old uh, substitute industrial arts teacher. Um, he kind of looks like Bob from Tekken. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's 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 got some weight on him. Yeah. Okay, he's, cool. a, he's a big lad. He's a big. Yeah. Okay. He's a big one. Yeah. Cool. So. Um, yeah, he, uh, do I, are we talking about like what's happened to them and stuff? No, like, no, 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 nope, not yet. That? No, no, okay. nope. Uh, just, yeah, what do you that's... look like? Kind of, you know, what are you about? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you got he... that like, you got that big shop teacher gut that's yeah. like, but it's like weirdly made of steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like, uh, it's like E Honda, you know, from Street, like Street Fighter. Yeah, like, totally. he's like, he's like bigger, but he's like, yeah. there's some, there's some definite muscle there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When you need to like use the bolt cutters to like cut things, you can just kind of prop it on your gut and just be like, bam. And <laughs> yeah. then, yeah. No, nope, I totally get it. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Cam, what's your uh, character's name? Uh, his name is Silas Reed. Silas Reed. Yeah. What uh, does Silas Reed look like? Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I put points into it. Fuck I, yeah. I figured I'm going to be a vampire. I'm going to be beautiful. Um, so he's like, a, he's youthful. He's long-limbed, fine-featured, mm. um, you know, kind eyes. Mm. Uh, has that kind of air of burly intellectualism to him. Okay. Right? He, uh, he occupies the space that he's in. Okay. Excellent. You know, that, that kind of, like, not, not presence, capital P presence, but, mm -hmm. you know, Silas is definitely in the building. Excellent. Capital P Presence was a reference to one of the vampiric disciplines, which are the special vampire powers. We'll go into those in just a little while. But for now, let's hear from Corey. Uh, my character's name is Jordan Hinkleman. That's her married name. Yes. Uh, uh, born Weeb. Um, she's in her 40s. She's got short, curly hair that she definitely like puts in rollers to you know, sleep, mm -hmm. um, big glasses, kind of five, six-ish. Okay. Yeah. Some creatures of the night put a lot of stock into fashion. How do they dress usually? Uh, nightwear or daywear? General fashion sense, let's say. <laughs> uh, daywear so would be a wreath of fire. You can't go out in the day. The ah, sun. Oh, yes. that's ah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So for just moseying around town, mm -hmm. out amongst the people, just got kind of like coal-colored stretch pants, uh, 
a sleeveless blouse, okay. maybe like a knit shawl that's a burnt brown. Nice. Okay. But for like party time, there's like a big boxy dress, like if you put a rectangle on a person. Oh, awesome. And like big hoop earrings uh -huh. and uh, different pattern leggings. Okay. And maybe so, just a little bit of a heel on the shoe. Okay, so definitely like suburban mom that's still got it. Oh yeah. Okay, like definitely still has it, isn't trying to fake it. Yeah. Fantastic, excellent. General fashion sense and style. Goth, my dude. Uh, I feel you. You know, he thrifts. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of money, but All right. uh, keeps up with the fashion blogs. Okay. He also wears shoes with a little bit of heel. Marvelous. Um, like new rocks, like a big thick new rock. Yeah, like a Cuban heel, okay, kind of cool. thing. Uh, a little, little bit looser on the clothing. Okay. Like uh, you know, bigger sleeves mm -hmm. maybe. Um, still, like looks good, but definitely you know there could be, there, there there's kind of like a wizard robe. Mm, uh, okay. You know, subtext. To okay, it. so gothy Hogwarts. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Yeah. It, 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 let me work on it. <laughs> All right, cool. Let me no, workshop uh, that. Somebody would be like, gothy Hogwarts, and he'd be like, I have to go home and change. I, have to, <laughs> I need to go. Well, you're like, you know, uh, during grad at universities for different levels, like when you get up to like your master's degree, they give you like a mm. poofy hat. Do you mm. always just look like you're attending some grad ceremony? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get my regalia. Never got my regalia. <laughs> Adam. Uh, well, he's still trying when he's working because he's still trying to teach night classes. Yeah. Um, definitely like slacks, button up, short sleeve shirt, tie, yeah. you know, like a usual mm -hmm. pocket protector. Um, but if he's not working, like an Adidas tracksuit. Oh, know? yeah. yeah like nice. just very casual wear. Russian mobster chic. Yeah. yeah. Gold chain? <laughs> no, Silver he's not chain. that kind of. He just wore it because like he thought. Um, like he wore the he wears the tracksuit because he thought uh, Sopranos was really cool when he would watch it all the time. So yep. he's like, I want to dress like that. The kind of guy that watches Sopranos and like yells at the TV. Yeah. In the, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Excellent. And your character. What does your character look like, Heather? Uh, Jessica. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jessica Chadwick. Pleasure. Uh, early twenties. Mm -hmm. Very feminine. Uh, green eyes. Has a tattoo All right. on the uh, wrist, mm -hmm. like a rose. Um, wears a lot of uh, because Jessica runs her own little Etsy shop mm -hmm. with uh, uh, skirts and stuff. Wears mm -hmm. wears her own made skirts. They're very flouncy, and uh, really has gotten into like s just short puffed sleeves lately. Nice, cool. So a little bit mousy, would you say? A little. Yeah? How about glasses? Yes, no? No glasses. No? Because you don't need them anymore. No, I don't need glasses. No, you definitely don't. Marvelous. So these are the people that have become monsters. Now let's talk about some of what makes them human. So touchstones and convictions. Convictions are the things that you have that make you a person. So for example, one of your character's convictions might be, don't kill. That might be something that they truly, truly believe. But if your character were a soldier, they might not have that conviction. Convictions can be kind of loosey-goosey. They can be whatever it is that keeps your character human. It can even be make sure that you enjoy your food. Like that could be a conviction. If you just eat for sustenance, that might be something that makes your character feel less like a person and less human and gives the beast a little bit more of a hold. So take a moment now, because each of these convictions, and I'm going to ask you to each pick two, each of these convictions are tied to a person. And we can all create these people together. In fact, I would like to, that typify that conviction for your character. And you may be wondering, or worrying, or thinking, oh no, these feel like weaknesses for my character this monster, this supernatural creature in the night, and you would be correct. They absolutely are. They may or may not come into play. They may or may not even be distant. They may be an estranged daughter that you only keep tabs with every now and again that you've become a vampire, or who might actually think you're dead at this point. 
but it's somebody in your life who is incredibly important to you that you might creepily stalk. Up to you. So, let's talk about convictions first. What's something that's very important to your character? Like core value. Uh, I mean, easy one for me would probably be just like no harming kids, I guess. Okay. That would be like the... How about don't hurt innocents? Yeah. Yeah? Don't harm don't innocents? innocents? Yeah. Fantastic. Who in your character's life typifies that? Somebody that they're still in contact with and they cannot be undead. They have to be a human. Because this is one of your connections to humanity. Can it be... I picked a um, contact... It can be your contact, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I have a, <laughs> I haven't named them yet, but they're uh, my contact is he. He's a manager of a Home Depot. Excellent. And okay. All right. One of those. We've been friends for like forever. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And yeah. it's one of those. He's like the night manager. It's one of the Home yeah. Depots that are open like really, really damn yeah. late. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Corey, got a name for Home Depot man? Yep. Anybody have a name for Home Depot uh, man? It sounds like a Chuck. Oh, I like, or like a Eugene. Eugene. I was Eugene. gonna say Bryce, but Bryce. Eugene. Oh, I like Eugene. Eugene. Yeah. His last name is Bryce, though. Eugene, it's Eugene Bryce. Bryce. I Could would buy so... a pound of nails from, from Eugene. Eugene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the name of a man you buy a pound of nails from. Would you be so kind as to write that down? Yeah, I can do that. Marvelous. Do so I write it under my touchstone? Yeah. Yep. And then write under your convictions: don't harm innocents. Okay. This is just a straight up good dude. Does not fleece anybody. Always gives them the right advice. This is the kind of mechanic that if somebody brought them in and they didn't need the extra three tires, four tires, how many tires does a car have? He would absolutely be honest about what they would need. Were he a mechanic, but he's not. He's a Home Depot night manager. Mm. And one of these Eugene days, Bryce. the Oilers are going to win a cup for him again. <laughs> yeah, no, the Leafs. The, oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was saying oh. that, I was thinking that Oliver is originally from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Mm, mm -hmm. So, mm, yeah. okay, I like that. I like that. It's a transplant. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Good. All right. So, core values for your other characters. Just something they really believe in. Again, these don't have to be good. Like, it literally, one of your convictions could be, like, always look out for myself. Yeah, I was thinking like, survive. Survival is the most important. Okay. Yes, survival is the most important. That does mean that any time that your character is selfless, they might have, their beast might actually take hold a little bit more. Ooh. You could have a, 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 like a conviction that's, for example, uh, always look for the advantage. True, yeah, that works. How's that? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't necessarily have to be malicious, but you need to make sure that you're at least breaking even in just about every interaction. Right. Yeah. And this isn't a mechanic, you're going to be punished if you don't do this. This is a guidance for your character. Mm -hmm. Yep. And typified by who in your life? Oh, my ex-husband. <laughs> Fantastic. Hank. Hank? Hank. <laughs> yeah. Did you keep Hank's last name or did yes, you? Yes, I did. Because <laughs> I'm going to take it. Yeah. All right. Excellent. You kept Hank's last name. And your last name again, please? Hinkleman. Hinkleman? Hank All right. Hinkleman. You paid for it, it's yours. <laughs> oh, man, that, yeah. guy's, oh. that guy's parents hated him. Yeah. Oh, uh. He definitely has a belt buckle that's a double H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In gold, yep. studded with diamonds. With, like... Uh, scoring on it from a beer can. Yeah. Or a every beer. Oh, every year he's in a fantasy football league and he always gets last and complains loudly about how the league is rigged. You know him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they may have had beers together. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> as, a matter seen, of fact, yeah. as a matter of fact, we're going to say that you do know, you don't know her. I know Hank. But you, don't know, you do know Hank Hinkleman. Yeah. Uh, I, because like, sometimes the night manager... Uh, does after the store is closed, right in the middle of the lumber yard, sometimes does poker games. I was just gonna say there's a poker night. Yeah, Hank damn Hank right Hankleman there are. Comes. Excellent, good. Yep, and that's where you know Hank Hankelman. Yeah. All right. That poker night has been going every week since Casino Royale came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it has. Which is Fantastic. in 2006, because I was looking at that year <laughs> so, movies. <laughs> core, core value of, uh, so think of a second core value, you two. That was Cut. excellent. All right, uh, Cam or Heather, take your pick. I can go. I, I'm not really sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was something I read that kind of stuck with me that I, I enjoy, uh -huh. um, and I want to figure out a way to integrate that sure. for this. 
Uh, it was somebody who just tweeted, like, be hard and sharp and pure. Okay. And we can break that into... To, like, and, and the other one was, be kind and gentle and loving. Okay. And I wanted the internal discipline and the high expectations of oneself combined with the uh, uh, externalized um, uh, uh, projection of like acceptance and patience. Okay. Hmm. Okay. One of your convictions could be uh, like patience in all things. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Patience in all things. Okay. Yeah, especially Excellent. when dealing with other people. Yeah. Right, like that that kind of, um, you know, when you have a teacher who is yeah. very patient with students mm -hmm. and has no time for people who are, like, trying to punch above their weight, right? I like feel when, you. Uh, angry, yelly, Scottish professional chef on TV. Gordon Ramsay? Yeah. He's English. Is he English? He is. English. Uh, you know, how he is with kids? Yes. And then how he is with... Anybody? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anybody not kids? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, so patience in all things. Okay. I think is a good one. And then you... I'm going to leave... I'm going to pop over Heather uh, and then kind of work your second one while we're doing that. Sound good? Sounds great. Fantastic. You sound great. Heather. What about something like keeping up appearances? 100%, yes. That is a core value. Like a core conviction is best presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's say that you could, the conviction is uh, put uh, best foot forward. Okay. Okay. And who in your life typifies that? And Cam, think of a person that typifies that. Give me just one second. Um. Anybody can jump in and make suggestions if you're comfortable with that, Heather. I uh, I think my dad. Okay. I still like I don't like my last name because I don't like my dad, but I don't want him to know. Okay. That I'm if I'm doing poorly or anything, I always want him to know that I'm okay. Okay. Even though I don't like him. Got it. Okay. I. That's really fucking real. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're starting off strong here. Shit. Good. That's fantastic. All right, good. So we start workshopping a second one, and your father's name is? Um, you don't have to think of it now. We can think of it in the moment. I if anyone has a moment. suggestion, that would be great. Uh, Thank you. Your <laughs> father. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Jessica, Jessica Chadwick. Chad. <laughs> Chad Chadwick. Doug. No. Uh, Douglas? I like Douglas. Yeah, yeah like, Douglas. Yeah. What about something like, or David? Like, you know, the father. The yeah. father, yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you want something biblical? I can go with biblical, but I, for personal reasons, don't want to use David. Okay. okay. Abraham. Yeah. Abe? Great. Abe. Abe. People call him Chad, though. People call him Chad? Yeah. Fuck yeah, they do. Abraham, Chad, Chadwick. Yep. Abraham, Chad, Chadwick. The Chad. Yes. That was his nickname in high school, was the Chad. And everyone yeah. else just called him the Chad. And he constantly makes jokes about your last name, like John Wick. Oh, like, oh Chadwick. Chadwick. Yeah. I'm Chadwick. Yeah. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Don't mess with me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. Uh, would you be comfortable leaving the flavor of asshole he is up to me? Yes. Excellent. Can you say, like, maybe your dad, like, they won a provincial championship in football, but he never went any higher than that in high school. Like a high school provincial. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's like yeah. And that's what the... percolated to the top yeah. of the brain with this asshole. Yeah, oh. the Al Bundy yeah. special. It's definitely where yeah. I get my sports from. The Al from. Bundy special. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Every once in a while, puts on the varsity jacket and goes like, "Oh, it must have shrunk in the wash." Yep. Yeah. Oh. That, that flavor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not button. Yeah. Oh, it's just not. Oh man, it's supposed to be dry cleaned like that kind yeah. of. Yeah, douche canoe. Great. Excellent. Uh, so the person that kind of typifies this conviction. His grandmother. His grandmother. Raised right. by his grandmother. Okay. Excellent. And she was like, you get your chores done. Yep. You expect the best of yourself. She's still alive, but she's not doing well. No. Yeah. No. Uh, yes. I got you. Do you mm -hmm. trust me to fill the rest of this in? Yeah, totally. Fantastic. Awesome. 
big mistake. Corey. <laughs> uh, always getting the job done. Oh, okay. Finish your tasks. Finish your tasks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> The most badass suburban mom I've ever heard of. <laughs> you better finish your vegetables. Like, we're gonna finish this. Finish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, There's man. too many of them. Yeah. There's not enough. enough. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> you never, you never pick a fight, but you always finish, finish the fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <we're... laughs> when I was a kid, I, was I used dishes. to hate eating yeah. like, I used to hate eating like steak or roast beef, and they would always just make me sit there and like saw through it yep. and chew it, and it was just like yeah, a mush yeah. of flavorless, and I couldn't, and mm. uh, Oh yeah, yeah she's, a, she's a three-star general in the clean plate commando special ops unit. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, uh, who's the person in your life that typifies that? Did she actually spend time in the military when she was younger? Did she have military parents? Or like scouts or something? Girl yeah. guides? I, it could be a girl guide, yeah. It could be like her, her girl guide. It's Den Mother? I think it's Den Mother. Yeah, yeah. It, it is now. Or is that Brownies? Yeah. yeah. That brownies brownies is Den Mother. I don't know what girl guides are. Again, I am a transplant to Canada. I am still learning. I am studying. It's like Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts? Yeah, yeah. Girl Scouts. Oh, it's still Girl Scouts. It's still Girl Scouts. Oh, fuck yeah. All right, Den Mother. Hell yeah. Do you want it to be a Den Mother? Sure. All right, somebody that you still get in touch with? <laughs> uh, different city from when Did I was younger. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, you, maybe keep in touch like on the phone, like maybe once a you're year. You're still very invested with a touchstone. Yeah. You're, you're very invested in their life and you want to make sure that they're okay, okay. and protect okay. them. Okay, so. yeah, yeah. So, dead mother. Uh, I call her Flo. Flo. <laughs> I like Flo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, her name is Florence. Uh, yeah. And yeah, we keep in touch and I always ask her for guidance. All right, excellent. Yeah, so when you were in Girl Guides, uh, she, her, her nickname was Old Flo, and now she's really Old Flo. Yeah, she's really All Old right. Flo. Excellent, fantastic. Okay, so that's two for you. You've got your two. Please write those down, uh, the, both the touchstone name and the conviction. I will ask you again for reference later. Do you have your second one yet, Cam? Uh, well, yeah, we were, we had discussed, like, the, 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 the internal one, yes. discipline and then the external, like, Yes. Yeah. So we have so, the internal. What would you say the external is then? Okay. I, I thought the patience in all things was the... Okay. Um, Let's back up. Okay. You tell me what it is. Uh, patience in all things is the internal or the external that you were The saying? external. The external. The patient with other people. Yep. Uh, always like kind and gentle with other people unless they're like... His first uh, line. Okay is usually like openness, honesty. Excellent. Um, and with himself, he expects like uh, all the I's to be crossed, all, or all the I's to be crossed and the T's to be dotted. Excellent. Right? That <laughs> uh, yeah, works too. Yeah. But, you know, like, um, he's, an, he's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And he uses that kind of like internal discipline to stay centered. Okay. It's, it's something that he uh, um, he focuses on, right? It's it's sure. it's a source of comfort for him. Yes, to be so, able to get things like done and done well. Okay, get the job done right. Yeah, excellent. Okay, yeah. Let's say that. Get the job done right. Sure. Yeah. And do you need a moment to think about who in your character's life that would be? Uh, okay, sorry, yeah, I, I misinterpreted okay. things earlier. That one would be from his grandmother. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, so the earlier one. Mind if I take this to the table? Yeah. Excellent. Anybody have any suggestions? Which was the earlier one? Was the earlier one patience? Or yeah, like, patience what do you have things. Now? Patience? Yeah. Uh, Did you have like an art teacher? Maybe. I'd like to hear therapist. from Heather. Therapist. I'd like to hear from Heather yeah. in just a second. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, no problem. Uh, he is, uh, Cam is talking about his, uh, the person, his touchstone for the conviction of uh, get the job, job done right. Oh, okay. Yep. Yes. This one's patience in all things. Yeah, no, this one is patience oh, I'm in sorry, all things. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. This one is patience in all things. So a person in uh, <coughs> his totally not going to goth Hogwarts life uh, that typifies patience in all things. 
Thank you for the correction. Um, yeah, you would have you would have had either like maybe a teacher or family member who would have taught you that. Maybe somebody you were really close to that you trusted. Mm. College professor. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that. Okay. How do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, that that's good. When, yeah. Somebody who would be like, you are taking this too seriously. Yeah. Mm. I need you to. Yeah. Needs to come down to a nice even eight or nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With You're up here at a nine. We need you down here to calm the fuck down. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They cool. they take you aside like after class though. They never they'd never call you out in class. No, like no, you. no. Yep. Like this is your fourth time at my office this week. <laughs> <laughs> I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I found a mistake in the textbook. <laughs> yes, I understand that. It's cool. Yeah. I'm concerned. I'm falling behind. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. If anything, you're ahead, but I don't believe you. I'm your teacher. I'm the one that writes everything. I'm telling you. Okay, so what is this person's name? Uh, doctor. Oh, definitely a doctor. Oh. Fuck yeah. But never called Doc. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like the really good names that I had at school that were like Kitchen and Kerlachi. Oh, well, Kerlachi, that's a good name. Yeah, Kerlachi is yeah. a really good name. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Kerlachi? Yeah. All right, excellent. Can you spell that one for me? Uh, C A R L A C C I. Is that uh, German? Italian. Italian, okay. Mm. All right. He had really mottled skin. He had a skin condition. Uh, um, Giuseppe. We're going to go with Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, actually, like, immigrant, like, from Italy. Uh, Giuseppe, a lot of the kids were really mean to him. They called him uh, Spachi Kerlachi. So he had a skin condition. It was very bad. It was very mean. Mm. But that, that was the person. You didn't see any of that because you were too in your books. Right. And up your own butt, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Yep. All right, excellent. Okay, uh, anybody for a second? That's perfect. Thank you very much. And thank you, Table, for the help with that. So, who's next? I think you've got two, Corey, right? Yes. Yeah, you got, got two. two. Cam, you got two? Yeah. You got I, your one? I have one. Excellent. You got your one? I have one. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go first? Mm, does like. Adam does. Does like close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades be a, convi a, convi a conviction? Because like close, like as in like close is hardly ever good enough, right? Right. Like it needs to be, I guess that's kind of get the job done always. How, uh, but, that's fine. You can have the same conviction. Yeah. We all have core values. But I just figure like similar. he's a shop teacher, yeah. right? How about good enough isn't good enough? Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. I like yeah, I that. can hear a shop teacher saying yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just say good enough, right? Like I yeah. measured it. Did you measure it four times? Like, yeah. No. Did you measure it four times? Well, what is it? <laughs> no, see, it's a half an inch off. Well, what does that matter? Well, it's a half an inch off, and this is going to fuck up the carburetor and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then your grandmother's dead. Congratulations, you killed your grandma. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Did you yeah. measure it? Yes. Well, it doesn't fit. <laughs> like, so what? <laughs> right? If you measured it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, God. I heard that after a date once. Mm -hmm. What? What? <laughs> Nothing. You don't have to put that on. I just film. figure, like, He's a sub teacher, right? He's never had a permanent classroom. Yeah. He's been a sub his whole life. So he's used to continually getting disrespected by teenagers. Can I make a recommendation for this one? Yeah. How about it's that one kid, because you kept going to that one school. It was that one kid that actually listened to you. That was like, oh, hey, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. Remembered your damn name. Mr. Tyndall. Yeah, Mr. Tyndall. He's like, hey, Mr. Tyndall, what's going on? Like, he, you know, yeah. he was the one that was always like, guys, leave him alone. Like, fuck, yeah. he's doing his best. Like, <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I think it would be a woman. All right. And it would be... Toby... Okay. I'll just say Toby for now, like T-O-B-I. T-O-B-I? Yeah. Okay, Toby? Yeah. Okay, I can handle the rest if you yeah. want. Yeah, I'll handle the rest. Excellent. All right, lovely. Fantastic. So, do you need some help from the table for the last one, or you got something in mind? I was thinking maybe uh, being on time means not being on time, but at least being an hour beforehand. Oh, okay. 
Um, but maybe that's a little too... I was thinking, like, you're like a journalist, right? Kind of? <laughs> writer. A writer? Who has to be a journalist. Oh, you yeah. have to be a, a journalist? A writer who has to be a journalist at well, this like, point. I was like, maybe there's something, like, you always need to know at least the truth of a subject. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have to find out Like, I don't happening. like when people lie. Yeah, or, or like, I don't know, just like, I just figure with vampires, it's hard to know what the truth of the situation is. Oh, boy. But, yeah, maybe, like, I could figure that could be subjective. something good. Like, you could be like, I need to know what's going on. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, intentions, I guess? Like, you just need to I like, know. I like the idea of the truth as a subjective. Yeah. Like it, it the has. truth is important? Yeah, the truth is important. Yeah. That'll come up a lot, though, because I'm figuring that a lot of people in this world are just going to lie to your face. So. Oh, I, I mean, I took subterfuge. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> truth is important. Yeah. It's important to know what the truth is yeah. so you can lie effectively. A, yes. Yes. Yep. You have yeah. to give that little bit of sugar to help the medicine go down. In the most delightful way, copyright issues. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> What kind of person does anybody? I'm, can I take this to the yes, table? Yes, please. Excellent. Let's take this to the table. What kind of a person in this mousy, semi-abandoned journalist life, living with two other roommates? Do you want it to be one of the roommates? She doesn't like her roommates, does I, she? No, you don't have to like your touchstones. <laughs> you you don't? just have to give a shit about them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we've already got your dad. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, we got your dad. Do you have like an old editor you worked for or something? I'm, I'm mostly doing freelance, but that doesn't mean I don't meets the same editor over and over again. Yeah. Hey, do you have an editor that you're working with like right now that you take your freelance stuff to that's like, hey, does this make sense? Or like, is this good? And they're usually like, no, but <laughs> keep trying, you know? <laughs> what I always like, send my work back. Well, you study, your character studied fine arts, right? Yeah. They say, right, like creative writing. Mm -hmm. What about not a professor, but like an author you met? Like whose a, work you admired and was like, no, you actually have like to like... Like a book signing. Yeah, that's fine. And for whatever reason, you developed a relationship with them, like, yeah. you, like, they're yeah. like, you, they, they're like, hey, I'd love to, or they'd like, you, I don't know, just the impression you made upon them, meeting them at a book signing, kind of like... I keep sending them Maybe they're like scripts. a local author. Yeah. If, they're, if they're a local author, they might go to like writing groups locally mm. to do like feedback and they always like... Like, does, does, do you think that works before we get too deep into yeah. it? Do yeah. you like that? I like I like the idea of um, an author. I don't know if I want them to be local. Okay. Okay. Like from Vancouver. The, Vancouver is fine, but they have to be somebody who you are close to. Of oh, someone, they, so yeah. someone I see a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, they're not gonna they're they're not a connection to what makes you human if they're super far away, or at least not accessible to you mm -hmm. in some way. I think touchstones are like. I would maybe prefer like um, uh, a teacher who has maybe published one book. Hmm. Okay. Like, but it's a self-published book. Was it successful? No, I, but no, you really look up to them. I have anyway. thoughts <laughs> that have assigned their own books for reading. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Ooh, okay, boy. so everybody in your life is a trash person. Yes. <laughs> okay, great, good, <clears throat> okay. what? A, Tire fire of a life. I don't yeah. even have to do much work with you folks. Did they teach you this lesson because it's something they believed, or is it something that you learned from them by watching and being mm. like, ah, what not to do? Mm. <clears throat> I think it's something they believed in. Mm. Excellent. All right. Um, so we I have our people. We have our conviction. I have a name for them. I can do it. Okay. I'll do it. All right. Awesome. I look forward to it. Fantastic. Uh, Hank Hinkleton. Hinkleman. I'm sorry? Hinkleman. No, no, this is the rivals, like the Hatfields and the Coys. The Hinkletons uh, don't like the Hinkletons. <laughs> okay, that, that is totally fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I married into that family, so I don't... I, <laughs> yeah, they are... There's they a are, lot to catch up on. Mm, they're <laughs> hill folk to the extreme. No, um, I mean, he is. He's, yeah, he is... Yeah. Who, he's country. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's all the bad things you hear about. Up island. Uh, good. Well, I'm going to get yelled at for that. So, <laughs> we have our convictions. We have our touchstones, yes? Yeah. Yes. All right. Excellent. Uh, should this person ever come into play, I have uh, a name and personality in mind. Okay. All right. Uh, should they actually come into play? But it's your touchstone, so I wouldn't think that they're going to come into any way. So, we have our convictions and our touchstones. 
This leads us to humanity and your humanity track. We have eight humanity all around, except for Corey, who has humanity seven. Now, humanity is how human you are. And that determines what you can experience because you are dead. The closer you are to your humanity lets you know what you can actually enjoy and experience and feel. Humanity is a downward spiral. You will, at some point, if you play long enough, lose humanity and become more of a monster. It's up to you and your character's choices. Do they embrace that or turn away from it? And that's up to you. And should that come into play, and I'm sure that it won't, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So how about we start our story? All right. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> we're not going to start with your embrace. We're actually going to start kind of in the setting itself. Now, let me describe to you the state of Vancouver Island. And again, if you have any questions, any time that we come up on a new phrase or term or anything like that, this is the first time, I do not mind being interrupted, just put your hand up. I can see all of you very clearly. I am paying attention to you. You are my players. I love you very much. I am here to protect and love you and let you hurt yourselves as much as you'd like. So, Vancouver Island. Surrounded by water on all sides, and in the world of darkness, up until two years ago, was completely closed off to vampires, and nobody knew why. Surrounded by two cities, Seattle to the south, which is definitely contested by a lot of the major factions, Vancouver over to the east, which is ruled by a prince named Siegfried, who bans certain clans, but has recently started to open up the city completely independent because of their power and poise and political maneuvering. But Siegfried, two years ago, vanished, called away by the beckoning, which is something that's been happening with vampires of a low generation. The closer they are to their progenitors, some people say that that progenitor is Cain, of Cain and Abel. The first murderer is the first vampire, many folks believe. Others believe differently. But when Siegfried left, suddenly, vampires that decided to venture over to the island came back. And that hasn't happened for over 50 years. Siegfried is somewhere. His Nosferatu Seneschal, Mask, M-A-S-Q-U-E, is in charge. And is starting to entertain different factions, the Anarchs, the Camarilla. Some people even think that he's speaking with some of the nascent cells of a group called the Sabbat, which is as close as you can get to an apocalypse cult as a group of vampires. They are boogeymen in the night, but most of them have been called away. Most vampires, most kindred, which is what a lot of people uh, that belong to the Camarilla faction, call each other, kindred. We're all in this together. Of course, we're all in the night together. We are kindred. Other folks say canines. Depends on where you fall and what faction you belong to, or if you even care. Vancouver Island, however, is contested territory. Camarilla and Anarch factions, and other factions as well, mostly Camarilla and Anarch, those are the big ones that you have to worry about. I'm sure other ones won't come into play. They absolutely will have descended on Vancouver Island. There are strongholds, there are footholds all over the island, but it's ripe with opportunity. How many of you are native to the island? Show of hands. Native to the island? Native yeah. to the island, excellent. Sent in by the Camarilla of Vancouver? Yeah. Marvelous. Yeah. Native to the island? No. No. How did you end up here? Uh, well, I had been working in Ontario, I guess, mm -hmm. and there wasn't enough work out here, and there is work out in Victoria. Yeah. Yep. They needed teachers, <clears throat> or I was hoping to maybe snag a permanent spot here, rather yeah. than be a sub for the rest of my life. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then one evening, not more than three months ago, you woke up dead. Yeah. Mm. Well, at first I thought I was just really sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was <laughs> I terrible. I didn't understand what was going on. 
No. Yeah. You have a general idea of what's happening now. Yeah. Because after about three months, you're like, well, I've got to go to the hospital. Yeah. And then you were on your way to the hospital and were kidnapped. And we'll pick up with you in just a little bit there. Yeah. The Camarilla, which is essentially the vampire government, or as kind of it's been put, at least they think they're the vampire government, has started to reach out to some of the natives, finding some of the canines. And now that we've kind of set the scene, let's tell you where our players at are. Fit, fit, fit. Hmm. Now that we've set the scene and I can talk, it's something I do for a living. Let's tell you where our players are at. Uh, your character's name once again, please. My character is Jordan Hinkleman. Jordan Hinkleman. Jordan Hinkleman, as the local representative, scouted representative of the Camarilla, with an important goal in mind, has been approached by the Primogen, the Toreador Primogen of Vancouver, who is one of the scouts on Vancouver Island, found you, did you a favor, you owed him a favor, and he is calling it in. Primogen, by the way, is in a Camarilla or a city with a feudal structure, is the representative of a particular clan in that city. It's usually a prince and a Primogen council. There are different configurations, but this is the traditional one. And Vancouver, while it is an independent city, is definitely run in a more feudal way, especially now that Mask is in charge and the politics have started to shift. So Tripathy. Tripathy is a incredibly flamboyant person. Uh, loves talking about the beauty in all things. Typically has their outfit stylized straight down the middle. One is usually, one half is usually trucker. The other half is Salvador Dali on acid. They approached you with that favor and asked you to watch over their new favorite child. Child with an E, by the way, and a capital C, as is the way of vampires in the world of darkness. Watch over my favorite child and I shall put a word into the ear of our majesty, Mask, to help you accomplish your goals. But make sure nothing bad happens to her. She can be quite a handful, or, well, she might be. I don't know, we don't get along very well. But you'll find out. Here's her address. Make sure you watch out for her. Oh, also, um, our local constabulary, constabulary, constabu, our sheriff, found a kaitiv that was trying to check himself into the hospital. He's a young one. I'm going to give you his address as well. You are to collect these two people and educate them in the ways of the night. Keep my child safe. Keep the Kaitif out of trouble. If you can, bring them into the Camarilla Fold. And if you can't, take them out of the Camarilla Fold. Are we clear, my dear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Honorifics and everything. You are truly a credit to your clan. Most of whom are just terrible people. Thank you very much. You are very, very welcome, and thank you. So, please, be about it, go collect them, uh, and then if you'd be so kind, just head out to the ferry, and uh, there's a Tremere coming in. He's going to be doing a little real estate shopping over here so that the Camarilla may strengthen their hold here on the island, starting in Victoria. Mm -hmm. Show them around while keeping the other two out of trouble. Yes. Can you do this? Yes, of course. Of course you can. Excellent. And he grabs your shoulders, kisses one on each cheek, his big Salvador Dali mustache kind of tickling your eyebrow and making your eye twitch a little bit. I, uh, do the, try to keep up with <laughs> rapid uh, movements. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. Yes. You do so with adequate deafness, as much as you're able to. And... I assume you are in your van and do the addresses and on the way? Yep. Excellent. It's got like a family van. It's my primary vehicle. Fantastic. All right. 
You are currently on the ferry on the way over. It's going to get in at around 11. Oh. In the world of darkness. Yes. <laughs> I thought vampires can travel over water. Vampires can absolutely travel over water. Oh, okay. There's just terrible, terrible things in the water that you generally want to stay away from. Okay. Yes, but vampires can go over running water. Most vampires can. Vampires that believe they can't hard enough when they're embraced, when they're turned, can't. Because they bought in to all of the various folklore that are out there, and they believe it so hard that they can't. Okay. Yes. But vampires 100% can. Uh, much to the chagrin of humans that think they can't and hop over a crick and start making fun of them. Yeah. They're just as What sad. about, like, I guess I should have asked this earlier, but, like, what about, like, the general stuff, like, garlic and, like, that's not real, right? Silver? Like well, his... I think because your character is so young, that would be something interesting to find out in character. <laughs> that's, why I'm, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. for, for me, uh, holy water is is an issue. Okay. Just for me, though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to pass off of you. We're going to say you're in the van, you're on the way. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Your character's name again, Adam? Pardon? Your character's name again? Oliver. Oliver? Marvelous. Yeah. Oliver. Yeah. You have been picked up. By a very, very handsome black man in a suit. Okay. He introduces himself as Quinn. Quinn? Quinn. Q-U-I-N-N. Quinn Jackson. He has bald pate. Yeah. Hoop earrings running all through one ear. It's exotic. Always wearing sunglasses. Always wearing sunglasses in an immaculate pinstripe suit. He has a little pin up on his lapel that is a scepter and a sword crossed. All of the stripes down his jacket are that symbol, but hand-stitched in miniature. This suit costs more than you have seen in your entire life. And this man pulled up in a very expensive car and picked you up from the hospital. Yeah. Forced you in the car yeah. at gunpoint. Okay. And started to explain some things to you. Yeah. Then told you to not do that again, or he'd be back. And he came back to your house every night for a week. After about a week of you probably bitching and complaining the entire time, but generally being afraid of this man who, granted, is wielding a Desert Eagle like a 22 pop gun. Yeah. Said, I have an arrangement for you. I have somebody that's going to teach you about the evening and the night because I cannot get through to you. So you're going to be somebody else's problem this evening. Huh. Just this evening? For a very long time. Oh. They're going to be your new mentor because I can't do it. I have responsibilities. I don't have the goddamn time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well... There's, I guess there's no going back, is there? No. No, yeah. Can't like reverse it, you know? Can't like, there's no like a, like a pill or something? No. No, yeah. All right. This is who you are, and I will not have you breaking the masquerade. Can you remind me what? Oh. <laughs> I forget. I'm sorry, there's just, there's a lot of information. <sighs> Don't let humans know what you are. Okay. That's easy. Is it? <laughs> because I caught you going to a burger joint. <laughs> yeah, I was hungry. That's not how you feed. I... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll... I'm going to go. Yeah. Someone's going to come and get you within an hour. Okay. Stay here. Yes. I'm not going anywhere. Excellent. And he pulls a small flip phone out of his pocket. This is for you. Normally, the Camarilla does not allow these. Uh -huh. But we need to keep track of you, and this is the easiest way. Here. The phone number is taped to the inside. 
He hands you like an old ass like Motorola like flip phone. It's like yeah. this big. Yeah. It's so tiny in your massive <laughs> freaking hand. Yeah, it's just like a little thing. It's like I never really used one of these before. I have faith that you'll figure it out. Just keep it on you. All right. Okay. Anything else? No? Great. And he gets into a very expensive Ferrari and gets the fuck away from you as fast as he possibly can. Yeah, that's understandable. Which is considerably fast. <laughs> yeah. And now we switch to Jessica. Hello. Hello. From the other room, you hear, we're out of milk in your dingy, dingy apartment. It's Kathy. Kathy's complaining we're out of milk again. Kathy's usually the one that drinks all the milk. Fuck Kathy. <laughs> what are you doing at this moment? Um, I'm sitting at my room on my computer, trying to type up a thing. My roommates are being too loud. All the time. Always. Always. They stay up later than you do, and you're dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You hear, Jess, Jess, that courier's here again with one of those letters. <sighs> Fine. I'll come get it. You're used to getting these letters because your sire, Tripathy, doesn't use email or technology. He's told you you're not supposed to, but there's not enough people here watching, so just be careful. I don't understand those newfangled things anyway. Mm. But he always sends you these letters. They're usually in different colored envelopes. They have an inordinate amount of glitter inside. Or tiny cutout bats. <laughs> or perfume. Or potpourri. And they are always sealed with a wax seal of a rose that matches your tattoo. Okay. Which is something that Tripathy got you before he turned you. Because vampires cannot get tattoos or piercings. It's very difficult to do. Because when you wake up in the morning, unless you're severely damaged, you revert back to exactly the moment you returned. So you, I would imagine, if you want to, have to shave a five o'clock shadow every evening. Well, he's got a, a mustache. Excellent. <laughs> he will have that mustache Brilliant. for eternity. Okay. Marvelous. I assume you... I go get the letter. Yes and open it over the sink as you normally do in the bathroom? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a secret admirer? <sighs> Kathy looks exactly, however you picture her in your head right now mm -hmm. of what a Kathy that sounds like I just sounded like looks like, don't change your image at all. Okay. That's what she looks like. <laughs> she wears too much pink. It is all so Lululemon. So much pink. Everything is Lululemon. <laughs> it's yoga wear and you've never once seen her take a class, mm -hmm. ever. She's got the word uh, juicy on the butt. Yes. Mm -hmm. As many places as she believes are juicy on her body, which are considerable. Yep. She talks about her Instagram followers all the time. Oh. She's always taking selfies. God. Constantly. She takes nothing but selfies. She's Correct. always in the bathroom using the good bathroom light. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Hashtag blessed. What do you have there? <laughs> Namaste. Uh. Kathy, it's not your business. Fine. All right. Just trying to be nice, Jess, Jess. Even Why giving this cool nickname. I appreciate the cool nickname, Kathy. She's already not listening to you yeah. and has taken her smoothie and juicy butt into the other room. Figures. All right. I'm going to open this envelope. Mm -hmm. uh, the scent of marijuana begins to waft through the apartment. Uh, you open the envelope over the sink. My dearest child and it is in the most beautiful flowing script, and then changes calligraphy halfway through the letter. If anything can be said about your sire, is that, let's call your Korean sire, your, your, I'm not Korean sire, excuse me, let's call your sire uh, Korean bonchong, like all of those little sides that you get, because he's extra. Mm -hmm. So, he, no, that wasn't a good one? All right, that's fine. <laughs> Tough audience, Jesus. I only eat bean bop. What's that? I only I, eat bean I bop. Only, yeah, but you know, like all the little like extra stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, he's an appetizer because he's, I don't know, he's just a lot. He's yeah. a lot of a person, you, 
you all betrayed me, and I will remember this. <laughs> so, uh, he the the letter is again in beautiful flowing script, but it changes script. So it's gothic lettering, like it looks like it was printed, but you know he wrote this by hand. Oh yes, of course he did. Oh my goodness, my dearest child, somebody will be coming to collect you. You are to listen to them. You are to adore them as you adore me. You are to obey them as you obey me. They will be looking out for you, and I want to know everything about them and what they do. Do you understand? A letter asked you a question. <laughs> Signed, your dearest, your beloved, your sire, Tripathy. And then it's just this big fucking scrawl it that goes on. It takes up half the letter. It does. Yeah. It goes around the back. Yep. And the folds, like, if you fold it, it's three pictures. Sick. Yeah. Like one of those Mad Magazine fold-ins? Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> he's a lot, but he's real good. He yeah. is an artiste. I love what his... he can do. I mm -hmm. wish he would learn to text. <sighs> Camarilla has outlawed all technology. Yep. That's part of the reason why young vampires like the Anarchs. But we'll get into that in a little bit. On the ferry, mm -hmm. you are surrounded by a throng of humanity. About five years ago, the BC ferries, suddenly, and the provincial government said that the ferries were going to run 24 hours a day. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> Every day? Every day. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Oh. It is a better world. <laughs> Yeah, that's way better. Oh man, can we just, yeah. Can we have an Ikea too? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, that's gone forever. Uh, no. Stinger. You know what? The depot isn't even here on the island anymore. <laughs> where you could like order the. Yeah. 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 No, like I said, it's a world of darkness. <laughs> it's not a world of let's go get good furniture. Yeah. yeah. I would be out on deck. Excellent. Yeah. He, uh, this whole business with the ocean, mm -hmm. deeply fascinating mm. and terrifying. Staring into the inky blackness. Yeah. Like what's, what's down there? You don't know. Mm. Well, you don't have to breathe. No. You could find out. I could. You could. I'd like you to make a roll for me. So this is going to be the first roll of the game. All right, so let's just explain once again how hunger works. All right, so your dice pool, let me just pull up a character sheet because I have 25 years of vampire click clacking around on my head and sometimes it gets messed up. So give me one second, let me just pull this up. So currently everybody's hunger is one. You have, we're gonna just assume everybody has fed recently, but it's a new night. So the very first roll is going to be what's called a rouse check. So everybody please take a 1d10. Mm -hmm. Now, a rouse check is generally what you use to do, you just roll it to see if you get hungrier or not when you do certain things, okay? Sometimes a uh, using one of your disciplines, one of your vampire powers will call for a rouse check, but you need to do a rouse check at the beginning of every evening. Every time you wake up, the power of the blood activates and raises you up out of death. So, roll, yes. When a vampire is sleeping, are they considered dead? Yes. Okay. Yep. By all, all appearances and all accounts, there is no way to know that a sleeping vampire is not a dead body. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, you roll your 1d10. Six or above means you do not get hungrier. Five or below means you get hungrier. Rut row. Two. Two. Eight. Two, eight, you do not get hungrier when you wake this Hell evening. Oh yeah, let's go all Two, over. you get hungrier when you wake this evening. The beast uncoiled in your chest, asking you to feed it. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> your beast is probably going to be a little bit different. Okay. Your, uh, you rolled a two? Two. Ah, you see, your beast wakes up with you, wondering what it can take tonight. What can you make yours? What'd you get? 10. Oh, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, good. 
Excellent. Chilling, big chilling. Yep, yeah, you're just like, cool, <laughs> great. Your hunger does not increase. But if your hunger is at one, you are always a little bit hungry. The higher your hunger gets, the more irritable you become. If your hunger gets high enough, you're going to feed whether you like it or not because the beast goes, you know what? You're not doing the thing. I'm going to do the thing now. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's people. I give zero shits and two fangs. <laughs> Somebody's getting bit. They're like, we're cool. going to die, you idiot. Yeah. And they try to take control of the situation. Yeah, yeah. Except they don't care enough to call you an idiot. They're mm -hmm. just, I need a, I need blood. Yeah. Yum, yum, num, num, num. <laughs> yeah. Good. Excellent. So on the fair, I'm going to ask you to make a roll. Okay. All right. Uh, and that's going to be uh, wits and awareness. Wits and awareness. Wits and awareness. Now, and you have, yep, just take whatever your wits is, which is what? Uh, three. Three. Excellent. Pick up three dice. And then what is your awareness? Four. It's my four. Whoa, damn. Nice. Yeah. So that's Specialist. a pretty big dice pool. That's eight. Yep. Two of those dice are hunger dice. Or it's, sorry, it's seven. Oh, seven. Excuse yes. me. Yes. So two hunger dice. I'm good at talking, not at math. So yes, uh, two hunger dice. So you're going to roll all of those dice. The difficulty of this is going to be a two. So that means in order to succeed on two of the dice, you need at least two of your dice to be six or above. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got four successes. Four successes. Uh, however, Excellent. yes, I rolled a 10 on my hunger die. Excellent. You rolled a 10 on your hunger die. Normally, that has absolutely no effect. Because the hunger dice, you see, those are the beast's dice. Those are the ones it gets to use. Because every once in a while, it's going to do a thing whether you like it or not. Now, a 10 on the hunger die in and of itself is not bad and has no effect. However, did you roll a 10 on any of your other dice? I did not. Then you are fine. If you rolled a 10 on a hunger dice and any of your other dice, that's a critical. Tens count as double successes. One 10 and one 10 is four successes. Any additional 10 is another two successes. Fantastic. However, if one of those dice comes up a 10 on your hunger dice, you do the thing you wanted to do, but the beast does it for you. I may in the moment ask you to describe what that is, asking you to not hurt yourself, but hurt your character, because again, you are not your characters. A healthy amount of Schoidenfraud to the, on this table is advisable. <laughs> but you're fine. Okay. Yes. Now let's imagine another scenario. Let's say our friend Cameron, his character, rolled no successes and a one on one of those hunger dice. Oh, that's bad. That's a bestial failure. And a collection of things can happen in that case which I will most likely not ask your input on. I may ask you to describe, but your clan compulsion might come up. A whole bunch of things may happen. That's gonna be a good time, because <laughs> at some point, it gonna happen. Now, if you roll your dice and you're not happy with all of your dice, if you wanted to, I'm gonna offer you to use one of your willpower on your willpower track to re-roll three of your dice that are not hunger dice. But are you happy with that four? I think I'm happy with that four. I'm happy with that four. Heather, are you happy with that Absolutely, four? Absolutely, I'm happy Fantastic. with that. Fantastic. Corey, Adam, are you happy with that four? Yes. Yeah. Marvelous. A man is also on the deck, mm. standing on the bow, staring up as you weave gently and quietly through all of the islands that are out there, looking up at a three-quarter moon and he tilts his head to the side and looks back right at you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look happy to see you. And then moves out of sight. Interesting. Hmm. You are not required to do anything about this. It could just be flavor. The guy might have had bad gas. It's up to you what you want to do. Decide quickly. You uh, have about ten minutes before you get into port. <laughs> let's let's see where he goes. See where he goes? Yeah. Okay. Are you trying to do it unseen or do you not yes. care? Yes? Excellent. Then that is going to be dexterity and stealth. How's that dice pool for you? Very bad. Fantastic. <laughs> 
You can do it's it. It's both. It's it's hunger dice. It's just hunger dice. It's just hunger dice. I am going to give you this option to not do the thing let's you not said do you that wanted thing. to do. Let's not do yeah, that let's thing. Yeah, let's not do that thing. You get into port. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> At about the same time as you arrive. But let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. Because mm. I'd like to see how these characters interact. Because mm. this game is about your characters and you. Heather, Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one of you would like to meet our suburban vampire mom first? Do you want to do it, Heather? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I Excellent. want to meet you first. Yeah. Marvelous. <laughs> About 15 minutes after you get that beautifully written letter, which you did what with? I burned it. You burned it. Very smart. Very nice. Excellent. Jacob will remember that. Very good, maintaining the masquerade. Holy crap, you're naturals. You're naturals, <laughs> I say. You pull up to a dingy, crap-ass downtown above a beaver tail, so it always stinks of oil. And if you don't know what beaver tails are, they're delicious, and you should Google it, O Canada. You pull up to this building. You know what apartment number it is. Yeah, anyone waiting outside? Nope. Yes, I do park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get out. Yep. <laughs> Check my notes. You Buzz. have a name for Tripathy's child. Okay. You have the full name. I have the full name. You have the full name. For the other location, you've got nothing. You've got Kai Teeth. Kai Teeth, in case you don't know, are one of the clanless. They belong to no clan. They are mm -hmm. usually looked down upon. So Buzz. Mm-hmm. The door buzzes. As is typical, none of your roommates answer it. Of course not. Guess I'll go get it. I hit the buzzer. Hello? Uh, hello. Is the, there a Jessica there I can speak to? Who's asking? <laughs> <laughs> Your, your ride is here? <laughs> Uber? <laughs> I, I didn't call for an Uber. Are uh, you sure you got the right address? I am definitely sure that I have the right address. If there is no Jessica there, uh, let her know that uh, she has missed her ride. You do know the relationship between the person that hired you and Jessica. I just don't know I'm talking to Jessica. So that is fair. <laughs> well done. Uh, I will. Uh, do you do you want a message for Jessica? Unknown the message person? is she missed her ride. Um, I like. I just have to. I'm supposed to watch out for her. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You do have the skills to break in if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is an old building. There are multiple ways to get through this door. Yeah, I should just break in. Yeah, I, I yeah. do actually. Yeah, have I'm not. Contact. I'm not letting you in when I don't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Have you seen where I live? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Very smart. Do I have How the apartment like? number? What's that? Do I have the apartment? You number? do have the apartment number. Yes. Four zero, and you think it was a six, but the number fell off a long time ago. But you can kind of see where it's discolored and says six. <laughs> Okay. Yep. It's nighttime. Uh, yes, I check for a fire escape. There is definitely a fire escape. Yep. Okay. Uh, the ladder is up, though. I have a soaring leap, so I jump up. You do. And does that cost a rouse check? No. It does not. So you look back and forth down the alley. You see no human eyes upon you. You see no other eyes upon you. You soaring leap, and you very deftly, or well, let's figure out if it's deft. Uh, let's give me a dexterity athletics roll, please. I assume you're trying to be quiet. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Give me a dexterity stealth roll. Dexterity stealth roll? Yes, indeed. Can I use silence of death? You absolutely can use silence of death. Does that now, cost a rouse? That will cost a rouse check, yes, because that is a level two. Do power. I roll that first? Yes. Okay, so just, it's a d10, and if it's above a six, no hunger? Pretty much, yep. I don't believe it has any other mechanics to it. It's a three. It's a three? Yep. You get hungry. I get hungry. So your hunger is at what now? Three. Fantastic. <laughs> Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I get to be quiet, right? 
Yes, you do get I, to be I quiet. I still successfully use the discipline. Indeed. Give me just one second. Adam, you're, whoa, hey now. Adam, you're going to say something? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I was laughing at oh, this. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, uh, a hearty chortle. Yeah, now I'm feeling hungry, so I might check other apartments as well. <laughs> Before going up? <laughs> Before going up. Fantastic. Hey, you know, it's nighttime. People are probably sleeping. Excellent. Excellent. So, this I is a good wish. time to bring this up. I have a special house rule. Yeah. Everybody roll a d10, please. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Marvelous. Seven. Ten? Ten. Ten? Ten? Yes. Ten? Ten? Ten. God damn it. Okay, so this is my house rule. Mine. It's called dumb luck. In instances where somebody says, I'm going to check other apartments. And I, <laughs> I make people roll a dice to determine how many dots you have in dumb luck. You both have five dots in dumb luck because you rolled a ten. Blech. So one is one, two and three is two, four and five is three. So you have, or so far, yeah, one, two, ten, seven, yep, three. Three and three. So you have three dots each in dumb luck. So it's just an extra stat. You can write it okay. on your character sheet now, please. Um, and that's, when you ask me questions, is there an X? We will roll your dumb luck mm. and we will figure it out. So please roll your dumb luck and we'll find out if there's an easily accessible apartment for you. So that I still use uh, hunger for dumb luck. No, no, no. no. Dumb luck okay, is so just, just this straight is up dumb luck. Role. This is not a supernatural power. This is a narrative conceit. Three, three, fantastic. You definitely you have your choice of people. There is uh, a nursery that you can see very easily. Uh, there is an elderly couple uh, on the next floor up on the fire escape, mm -hmm. and that was three. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, there's somebody with their window open, passed out on the damn couch. Love that one. Excellent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that one. Just kind of like stealthily sneak in. You could literally just knock everything over and it wouldn't make a sound at this point. I don't want to leave a mess. No. And you don't. Okay. So before we describe the scene, mm -hmm. how much do you want to take? So when you feed, mm -hmm. Slaking hunger, you can kill this person. Yeah. You could drain them. That's the only way to get to hunger zero, by the way. No hunger dice. No risk. But you have to take a life. In order to not hurt somebody, the maximum that you can take is essentially, it's called slaking your hunger. You can take two. What that? Them. But it takes a while. It's not like a, and then it flies into you. This is a process. They're going to have excellent dreams, though. Just, just one, then. One? Just one. All right. Just a quick, so a quick, quick, quick one. bite. Yeah. You creep in. The place reeks of beer and marijuana. Awesome. You lift up one foul-smelling hand. The body smells terrible, but you know what is inside is sweet. Your fangs slip down and into the gentle flesh on the wrist. The warm, beautiful liquid spills down your throat. And it is everything that you can do not to take more. The beast howls at once satisfied and frustrated that you do not take more. And with effort, you retract your fangs, and as you know, lick the wound closed. Mm -hmm. Putting the wrist back and slipping back out onto the fire escape. Yes. One hunger down. All right. And you're a little bit high. <laughs> you're starting to get high. All right. Mm -hmm. So that will have effects mm -hmm. on social roles, we'll mm -hmm. say. Excellent. But you're a little bit high, and you haven't felt like this in quite some time. You haven't felt marijuana high. In the suburban area that you normally feed from, you've definitely had like a white wine buzz every now and again. Yes, but you creep up and you find a room. Please roll your dumb luck, Heather. Um, it's six and above. Yes. I have one success. One success, excellent. That is not enough to beat the three. So your bedroom is on the fire escape. So you creep up 
And pretty much just as soon as you're getting into the room, you open the door to come back into your room, you get up on the fire escape and you meet eyes. A soundless creature dressed right now is staring in your window on the fire escape. And you know because you check, because you're careful, that that ladder was up. I uh, knock on the window. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I, um, since you knocked on the window, that's very <clears throat> weird for, I'm going to assume, I don't know how you got up there. I, I opened the window an inch. Hey. Hi, uh, are you Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> Who's asking? Hello, my name's Jordan. Hinkleman, you can call me Mrs. Hinkleman if you wish, or Joe. Uh, Tripathy wanted me to check in with you. I'm not sure if he informed you that we would be uh, together for a period of time. Uh, he might get a letter. Excellent. Yes. So, um, would you like to join me outside and go on a bit of a trip? He's gonna, he's not gonna be happy if I don't listen to his letter. Okay, yeah, just uh, give me a sec to grab a uh, chapstick. And uh, how long did you say I was gonna be with you? Until just you're informed tonight? otherwise. Tonight for sure. But more than tonight? Maybe more than tonight. <sighs> All right, let me grab like an extra set of clothes at least. I don't want to wear the same thing twice, two nights in a row. <sighs> Garbage. Excellent. So you converse, you prepare, and I assume without much yeah. trepidation. Oh, like get, through the window. Yes, yep. Through the window, downstairs, having packed provisions for a couple of nights, toothbrush, toy of the trees, things yeah. like that. You might be dead, but you're not a monster. No. Yeah, exactly. All right, excellent. What kind of uh, vehicle are you in? It's like a... Ford family van. Don't know what model would be, but it's got like the sliding doors. Yeah, yep, yep. Like yep. a Kia Sorento. Sure, I want one with like the DVD players and. Are you? Yeah, that's like a Kia kids. Sorento. Are yeah. you sure, Tripathy? <laughs> I expected a vehicle that looked a little more um, fancy. Like an ice cream cone. <laughs> so we're going to switch over. <laughs> Sir. Yeah. What is your character Oliver, correct? Yeah. Uh, what is your character Oliver doing this evening? Well, uh, well he just he woke waits. up, right? Yeah. He's just woken up. <clears throat> yep. So he's showering. Well, he had the conversation with uh, 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 Sheriff Jackson yeah. already. Well, that would have been wake up. Maybe he got woken up by that and he uh, hadn't showered yet. No, you definitely would, would be have, up before. Would be up before? Oh, okay. yeah. Up, showered, and now Oliver is probably watching the evening news in a reclining chair. Okay. Just big chilling. All right. You know? All right. So he's had the conversation, but he's... Yeah. he's but now he's waiting. He's kind of like, all right, well... Well, I guess somebody's... The angry up. one's gone, and I guess I got to wait for probably someone that's going to be just as angry with me because I don't know what's going on, and I don't get this, <laughs> and I don't particularly like it, but... I mean, this is the hand that life has dealt me, and there's not much I can do about it, right? That, that is absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. in a very tense van ride, uh, you in the back, uh, I assume, <sighs> flipping through channels? Well, or... I'm going to be like, I have a DVD of like Finding Nemo. You can watch if you're bored. <laughs> <laughs> there's like... There's some kids in college. I still have all the crap. No, she just left true. it there. Yeah. Yeah, Finding Nemo's from like, what, 2004? Five? Yeah. Around that? Maybe I like Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Disney movies, okay? Do, do you have anything more recent? Uh, what year is it? 2017? Uh, we're going to set it in 2017, yeah. Jeez, I don't even know. Movies. Lord something. of the Rings. We've got Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All the Lord uh, of the Rings. Uh, sure. uh, so after a lot of this back and forth. Maybe some backyardigans. 
You pull up in front of what kind of <laughs> oh, property? I've been thinking about this. All right. He lives in a duplex in a squamal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. He's, he's, You're in a squamal like, too, right? Um. You can decide where you want to be. I'm I'm good with the downtown. The yeah. Downtown. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're going across the bridge. Yeah. Yep. Across the bridge. Get to a squamal. Yep. It's like a dingy kind of brown house. Oh. There's a rug hanging over the the railing of the like small porch that's like on his side of the duplex. Mm -hmm. Hold just a moment. Yep. You're in line to disembark. Right. We're going to go forward in time a little bit. That man is about twenty people back. Hmm. You can feel his eyes on you. Did he have any kind of like, um, is he deathly pale? It's hard to tell from this distance without staring. I assume you're attempting to not let them know that you've noticed. Yes. All right. Um, but I'll try to slip away maybe. This is the disembarkation where everybody's kind yeah, of in that one like big, very line. polite Canadian line to get off of the boat. Mm -hmm. It would be difficult to slip away without a distraction. Unless you have some supernatural ability to aid you in this. I do not. Marvelous. Then I think you're stuck there. Yeah. The social contract <clears throat> rooting your feet in place. Once we disembark, Mm. I'm going to slip into the bathroom at the terminal. Okay. All and right. And just see what happens. Excellent. Yeah. We will leave you there for just a moment. So, we were in front of a shitty duplex in Squimalt. Yeah. And a van pulls up, looking for all the world as if a bunch of kids are going to pour out of it, ready to play soccer. Okay. There is no soccer pitch anywhere close to you. Mm -mm. The only thing pitched around here are empty beer cans. What okay. do you do? Uh, so <laughs> the DVD is Zootopia, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> uh, better, I guess. While I'm driving, I'm just going to be like, so we're going to go pick up some people. Got a uh, Kai T, Young Lick. Never met him. Don't know his name or their name. Um, just sit tight. I'll go get him. Just park, get out, walk up the walkway to the duplex. Bing bong. Doorbell doesn't work. Does, do, do, doorbell doesn't work. Yeah. It's gonna. You press it. <laughs> okay. So I hear the knock, and I'm like, "Oh right. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So you." Puts down the recliner and he gets up and he's like, okay, just, 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 Oliver, just, just be cool. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, this is new for both of us. Uh huh. Yes, uh, very much. Um, I'm not quite sure. How to how to do this? This is probably my first time. Uh huh. Uh, would you would you like to to come with me in my van? <laughs> uh, we can get we can get to know each other a bit. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. I'm, I'm Jordan. Hello. Oliver. Or Joe. 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 Oliver? Joe. Oliver. Oliver. Yes. Yes. Oliver. Okay. You're. You're a. You know. Neither one of you, I assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, have activated Blush of Life, correct? No. No. You both look fairly deathly pale, and your hands are both very cold. Oh, and you... unless you remember, you don't blink. Oh. You don't. Your humanity is high enough. You are, it's still an automatic process for yeah. you. You still, you're just a person. Okay. Every once in a while, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, that looked natural. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Nailed it. Yep. Do you Nailed know? It <laughs> did it. Do you know how long we're going for? I don't know how this works. I, one day, at le or a night at least, maybe two. Okay. 
Let me it's, go it's get. It's really it. going to depend on you. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me get some stuff, and I'll meet you outside. All right. Okay. And so Oliver will go and get like a little backpack that's way too small for him, because mm -hmm. um, it's the only one he has. And uh, he'll put some clothes and like some extra stuff into it, like toothbrush. He yeah. doesn't know why he's packing this stuff. He's mm -hmm. kind of like, do I even need this anymore? I don't even know. I should ask. Should I ask? Is it rude to ask? Am I an idiot? <laughs> okay. So then he packs all the stuff in yep. and goes outside and opens the sliding door to the, the van and like pokes well, in. I want to pop the back. So oh, you pop the back in. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. puts his back back in. He's like, yep. thanks. And he's got like... He's wearing like a pair of jeans and a pair of like fucking New Balance runners, you know, like dad shoes. Dad jeans, dad shoes, maybe like a like a blazer or like a jacket, like a wind jacket. Like he's trying yeah. to dress up. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's time for the big time. It's time yeah, for, yeah. yeah, he's trying to look like kind of, but something you can move around in, I guess. Yeah. And he sits down, and he's like, oh shit, Zootopia. Well, I want to be like, you, sir, you can take the front seat. Oh, yeah, he sits in the back, like next to Heather's character. Yeah. The, the front seat's empty. No, 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 he does that on purpose. He's just like, okay. I love Zootopia. Huh? I'm like, okay, I guess I can still keep an eye on him if he's in the back seat, <laughs> yeah. like right next to me. Um, hey, 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 Joe. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, Jessica. This is Oliver. Oliver, Jessica. Uh, we're just gonna be hanging out tonight. You know. Um, are we picking up anybody who's not a fashion disaster <laughs> tonight? What do you What do you mean? These are, these are the nicest clothes I have. What do you mean? They look like, great on you. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I always wear this. Uh-huh. I'm sure you do. I actually uh, switched to low-fat granola, and I've lost a lot of weight. And you look great. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. New rule for the van. We do not talk about how anyone is dressed. <laughs> oh, were there, were there van rules? There are van rules now. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, this night gets better all the time. Okay. Well, um, okay, I forgot to tell you the first rule, but since none of you can really reach the console, it would be like, don't mess with the radio, please. Uh-huh. I don't want to listen to We're going to, to say that this is all happening yeah. on while I'm driving. Yes, yes. While, while she is driving. Uh, um, I don't want to know what your mom music is like. So we have to pick no, it's up just one... radio. It's like AM radio. We're picking up one more person? Yep, one more. Yep. Got to go to the ferry. Are they nice? They're Tremere. They're Tremere. So they're great. I don't know. What they're that great. Means. I promise you, they're great. Tremere's are great. Tremere's are yes, great. Yes, absolutely. I should have eaten on the ferry. <laughs> 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 the thing that everybody says until they eat on the ferry. Yeah. yeah. Like, but this when person, you don't, you should have. This person ate on the ferry. Like they're like, and afterwards I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. These uh, fries were old. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So you arrive at the ferry. Mm -hmm. You park in short-term parking. Go to the pickup zone for ah, departures. The yeah. pickup zone, yes. You know that you're to get off the ferry and expect someone to be here, but mm -hmm. you're hiding in a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I go into the bathroom, put down my bag, wash my hands. Mm -hmm. Wash my face. You said I could have a phone because my technology is relatively high? You can have a phone here, yes. Okay. Uh, the rest of the chantry doesn't know you have a phone. Right. Your sire gave you the phone. Okay. And said, here, you can use this. His name is Theo. Oh. He's Greek. He's Ooh. exceptionally good looking with salt and pepper hair. Sometimes when he gets depressed, he wears moo-moos. Oh, that's very sad. It happens often. It's gonna be one of those nights. Yes. I check my phone in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I give it like five minutes. Nothing of note happens aside from some folks come in and use the bathroom. Somebody comes in with a kid and you have this thought of, when's the last time I saw a child? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. We don't see children very often. Nope. They're usually in bed. Correct. It's been a while. The child is, it's an Asian family that comes in. The child is looking very, very tired. Yeah, yes. yeah. All right. I give it a couple of minutes and mm -hmm. then 
pick up my bag, walk into the bathroom, <clears throat> look mm -hmm. around the terminal. You look around the terminal. You, you see most of the people get off the ferry. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a couple of stragglers that come in. And then mm -hmm. you emerge. So that man is gone? Uh, if you step outside mm -hmm. and you look around, yeah, he is not. You see him off in the parking lot kind of sitting on a big-ass Harley in long-term parking, looking at the entrance. Hmm. Now, I'm going to need you to make an order, because you have been trying to keep an eye on this person without yeah. letting them know. Mm -hmm. um, this person, by the way, has uh, kind of longer blonde hair. Um, you, you, you will eventually see him, but he's longer blonde hair, uh, Canadian tuxedo, like oh, definitely yeah. that jean. Like, mm -hmm. like yep. a cut? Yep. Yeah. yeah, but they look pretty ripped. Uh, they've just got like a ton of friggin' necklaces on. Like, yeah, you didn't get a good look. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you want to get a little more information, you can make a roll for me, but... I could <clears throat> actually, yeah. Excellent, yeah. okay. Uh, then that's going to be uh, Perception Insight. Perception Insight. Yes. Uh, Where is perception? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the old vampire click clacking around in my head. Mm. Uh, let's do um, composure insight. Composure insight. Yes. So that is six dice. Mm -hmm. With this is two... to remember details that you saw. You cannot see these details now. Okay. So with two hunger dice. Yep. One, two, three, four. Five successes. Five successes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> a lot of his... Nice job. Um, a lot of his uh, necklaces had what looked like... Like, he took apart various, like, motherboards and circuit boards and things like that. Okay. And, like, wore them as a necklace. Uh, he's got a lot of just small, looks like handmade jewelry Does all around as well. Does he have tattoos? Uh, not that you could see. No piercings? Not that you could see. Interesting. Mm. Oh, guy. actually, how many successes? Five? Five. He definitely has no piercings. Anywhere that you might not be able to see. Right. Yeah. I mean, if he jingles when he walks, then... You know, Correct. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's certainly not Jewish. All right. <sighs> well, he's not terribly interested in hiding what he's doing. No. Or thinks they are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this is just, I guess, something that I have to deal with. Yep. That there's... I'm going to guess that this is an anarch vampire. Or an independent. That's a fine guess. Yeah. I mean, but you see a van. You see a big uh, van. Pulling out the big guns. <laughs> I'm sitting in the van just like, okay, so we're looking for a Tremere. And I guess you walk out of Departures and mm -hmm. it's like, does that, does that look like a... I guess he dressed weird. Yeah. Get a little honk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I have an ability... Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Sense the Beast. Uh -huh. That means I can tell who's a vampire, right? Typically, yes. Yeah. If you're close enough and you can make the appropriate okay. role. So I can't just like look at like people from like a right. That feet. would that would be more Auspex and Sense the Unseen. Okay. Uh, sense the Beast is more of a feeling. Auspex mm -hmm. is definitely like I vampire. Like vampire. yeah, <laughs> there's a vampire. There's a ghost. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, ghosts aren't real. Ghosts are totally real. Um, yeah. So that's more of like I can see auras and things like that and kind of figure it out. Since the beast, if you activated that in a crowd, you could definitely be like, yeah, you got a beast. You got a beast. Okay. You got a beast. Did you want to use Sense the Beast? No. Okay. I'm unsure. Like, I guess maybe he'd use it, but he doesn't real like, Oliver doesn't realize that Cameron's so far away that I would only notice these. Two. Yeah. Actually, Oliver would do that. Yeah. He'd activate it and be All like, right, excellent. there's two vampires right next to me. Cool. Uh, and that's uh, <laughs> animalism, correct? Yes. Excellent. Uh, make that roll for me. Uh, which dice do I roll for? Uh, it should be on your cheat sheet there. Oh, yeah, it is on my cheat sheet. I'm oh, sorry. One sec. No, that's all right, man. Don't worry about it. Um, resolve plus animalism. Yep. Resolve plus animalism. How do I tell how many points I have in animalism? Uh, that should be the, oh, the, the number of dots that you have in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So it's five dice? Yep. I think. Sorry. Composure. No. Resolve is my best, so that's four. Oh, yeah. excellent. So it's six? Six, yeah. yep. And then make sure you include your hunger dice. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Good luck, Oliver. Uh, 
Um, one, two, three, four, five, six successes. Excellent. What's your hunger dice, sir? Uh, nine. Nine? Fantastic. Oh, well, that's not nothing. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> you definitely can tell that near you yeah. are three vampires. Or at least... But I can't tell how near the third... Oh, wait, am I the third vampire? No. <laughs> One, you are two. Not. That's definitely you the see, thing. You see, we're like one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two. Okay, it's not me. See, you sense three beasts. Yeah. Curling and snarling in chests. One, two. And you look out the window and you see a man leaned up against a bike. The beast that you sense is angry. It is so, so angry. You have never, ever felt or even been angry like this. It's almost overwhelming, but it's pure and it's hot. There's no equivocation. It's not the anger of self-loathing. It's an anger of vengeance. Yeah, like Oliver puts up his hand. <laughs> uh, y yes, Oliver, did you did you see something? Yeah. Um, okay. Kind of new to this. I have this thing where I can tell if you're a. You know. There's only three of us in the van. Yeah, but there's another one. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why my hand's still up. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, um, uh, hang down, please. Uh, there's another. Speak calmly. There's another one over there by the motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please very, don't don't make eye contact. If very he, if he upset. Comes over here. Let me talk. Okay. Okay. Just letting you don't know. Don't point at him. Don't look at him. But I'm gonna try to like mm -hmm. glance at my mirror or something. <laughs> Oliver's like. <laughs> Just gonna try to like do a yeah. <coughs> yeah, you definitely the... you definitely see them. Yeah, they are eyes locked on. Yeah, this person, this person, the last there. person out of the building. Yeah, I'm gonna honk, 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 <coughs> wave. Oliver waves. Well, there goes that. <laughs> any, any hope of like slipping away quietly. Correct. I'm Is he writing down the license plate number? Or? No, no, he's okay. just kind of flying staring. a flag. Right. Yep. I'm just sliding he looks down placid. the window. Okay. Ugh. He doesn't look I, threatening. I wave, and I pick up my bag, and I walk over. Is my like sense thing still going? Yes. And so now as, yep. Yeah. As they get closer, that's that's them. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, you no see, the, like the front door or the front uh, passenger seat is empty, and I can pop the back <laughs> as you get closer. I actually, I'll open up the sliding door and shift right next to Jessica in the middle seat, mm -hmm. and like pat <laughs> next to me. But you're like big, so you take yeah. up like yeah. a little too much uh, of the space. Yeah, but there's an empty mm -hmm. back seat and an empty front seat still. <laughs> put your my move. bag in the back. <laughs> like, you just get in this van without saying anything. You're just like, "Yep, this is where the candy is." Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> "Hi, uh, did I know who I was meeting?" No, no. I don't think I had his full name either. It was just like, "Go to the ferry." Yeah, right and here. yeah, yep. Go to the ferry. You'll know. Yeah. Yep. So you look sensible compared to the other people I've had to deal with tonight. Start, <laughs> starting off do strong, I, smell? I like, Do vampires smell? They don't smell like anything, right? Not really. You do, because like well. you've been eating burgers and vomiting. Oh. Mm. We don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, not really, no. OK. Nope. I, I just have like a dot in etiquette. Yes. D without, if I want to like, you know, have a proper introduction. Absolutely. Do I need to roll it, or does that no, just no, indicate no, no, no. like it, it, th that's that like if you wanted to roll to get like the minutia of this court or to know mm. like if I'm greeting a group of Malkavians, what is the proper way to do that? Right. Uh, which is one of the the vampire clans um, 
that would be an etiquette role, but for this, like, you can just auto, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. like, it's yeah, because rolling has You're the, polite. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Hi. I guess you're my ride. I, I guess you're my passenger. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Jordan Hinkleman. You can, call me, you can call me Joe or Mrs. Hinkleman if you prefer. Uh, please buckle your seatbelt. This is Jessica. This is Oliver. Hi. Oh, everyone meet. This is Hylas. Hi. Hi. I Sorry, be... Jessica, Oliver. <coughs> Hinkleman? Hinkleman. Huh. Played poker every night with, or every week with Hank. Hank Hinkleman? Brother? Ex. Um, how, how is he doing? Um, oh, awkward. He's, uh, he's still yeah. bringing that skate full of Irish whiskey, uh, yeah. out. Yeah, like, Hank's, uh, Hank's a character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He is yeah. a character. So, Silas. Silas? Yeah. Oliver. Pleasure to meet you. Jessica? Yes. Pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Joe. Uh, yeah, a, a pleasure. Ah, oh, so do you need to go anywhere, Silas? Uh, okay. I have yes. a point of hate. <clears throat> yes. Does that indicate that indicates accommodations that was... have already been set up for you? Okay. Absolutely. I can provide you with an address then. Yep. What are those accommodations here in town that have been set up for you? They, it's just a single point, so I'm assuming it is like a basement or an apartment. It could uh, be a long-term hotel room? Yeah. You tell me. I'm not assuming that the Chantry is really big on Airbnb. No. No? That would be something to do with technology. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably frustrating to you. Yeah. Yes. Um, like, no, I, I can book this online. I just need to borrow the credit card. Yeah. Right? Um, nope. <laughs> nope. Credit credit card? Cre mm -hmm. No, that's that's a thing maybe the venture deal with, but mm. oh. yes. Okay. It is a, yeah, it is a very sensible uh, bachelor suite mm. on, like, the fourth floor of a place downtown. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Marvelous. It came furnished. Yep. It is a 15-minute walk. Away from your apartment. It's still nicer than mine. Yep. Yeah, it's just it, like across the water. Maybe? Yeah, it's, yep. It, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Those hotels across the water, it's right across the water. Mm -hmm. And when you cross that water, it is it goes from an apartment like yours to hotels like yours. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you were kind of instructed to take care of these two, show them the night, show them the ropes, bring, you know, you are essentially in charge of all of these folks. Mm -hmm. Probably going to the Haven is yeah. mm -hmm. the best idea. Um, also, I'm going to like, <clears throat> do I have note paper in the van? Just checking my glove compartment, just like napkins. Mm -hmm. Got like a, Do you? Yeah, yeah, tear off a piece of paper. Got a landline. So I'm just gonna, Here's my phone number if you need anything. You can leave a message. Uh, I'll, I check it every day. Um, Th thank you. Yeah. Do you do you know him? Him who? I point to the the guy. Oh. On the bike. No, we. I. The not. guy on the bike. No, you don't. No, the guy but, on the bike has uh, mounted the bike and has a helmet on and is just sitting on the bike checking their phone. Where can I? Helmet? What a fake identify thing. like. Do I feel threatened by him? I feel threatened. Dude, dude on a bike. You definitely do. Yeah. 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 Yep. I don't, I don't he's not angry at anything. Yeah, he's it's just, just angry. angry. Yeah. It looks like he's about to hold Bruce Willis out over like an abyss. Yes. By by the throat. Yeah. Right? Like. Yeah. And scream at him. You slept with my wife. You slept with my wife. How dare you? And, yeah. Yeah. And Bruce Willis is like, this won't bring them back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like pull out of the parking space and start heading downtown. It's like, uh, bike guy, no, do not know uh, him. Always thought about getting a bike though. Mm. Hmm. Big Harley, just kind of lean back, or maybe like a more comfortable, like wider seat mm. bike, like one of those three wheel ones. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, something, you know, sensible. Yeah. 
and comfortable. So you pull out yeah. as you're chatting, and you head on down. I would like everybody to roll a uh, wits alertness check, please. Uh-oh. Or wits awareness, sorry. Oh, okay. Oops. With the hunger die. With the hunger die. Ooh, two tens, not on hunger die. Oh, marvelous. Uh, two successes. Two uh, successes, two. excellent. That's four successes, by the way. I'm throwing two. rocks tonight. Okay, so one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm sorry, how does the hunger die work again? So the hunger die work, uh, pretty much the hunger die, uh, you only really have to pay attention to them if either a 10 or a 1 oh, okay. rolls on them. Uh, if a 10 or a, ro- a 1 rolls on it, just let me know, and then we'll be like, all right, what do the other dice look like? You're either fine or, ha okay. it's beastie fun time. Yay, bestial failures. Those are fun. Eat your friends. All right, cool. So you pull out. Yeah. And the trip back is, you know, wooded. You get past the area where there's all of those billboards and everything. And all of you notice, you notice, like, because you're pretty much facing out the back at this point. Mm -hmm. The person on the bike is definitely following you. We're being followed. Yeah. There's multiple lanes. They're Mm -hmm. going a very specific speed behind you. Can I follow, like, in the movies? (laughs) Is, Is there bike plated? Like, does it have an identifying no. mark? Hmm. Nope. It looks to be a repainted old World War II bike. Ooh. It's matte black. Ooh. It's sexy. And unmarked. Hmm. This is like uh, the French Connection, huh? All right. A little bit. Anybody else feel a little dangerous? This is neat. Is that <laughs> the one where they drive the minis <laughs> through the sewers? Pardon? Is that no. the, the movie where they drive the minis through the sewers? It's the Italian job. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to do it. He's trying. Oliver's trying. Uh, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Maybe. And he just wants to fit in, so he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You a movie guy, Oliver? Ah, I mean, I like, I like ac- action films. Okay, okay. What'd you get? I had two successes. Two successes? Okay. You notice another bike join them while these two are talking about the movie. He's got a friend, I think. Okay. Maybe. Um, everyone has their seatbelts on, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Is this dangerous? Fact, he, in fact, has two friends. Two of them. Is this dangerous? What's Ooh. going on? Is he part of a bike gang? Don't worry about it. Hold tight. Watch your movie. Uh, I'm going to try to lose them. Yeah, got yeah. it. All right. Uh, how? Like, you don't have to tell me specifically. I'm just but, thinking like, about <laughs> driving on the Pat Bay Highway trying to lose, lose somebody. Like, 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 where are you going to go? Like, it's a straight line. It's five line. kilometers. There's a turn off to, like, a vet clinic yeah, that we can turn around You can turn off lot. to Keating yeah. Crossroad and try to lose them there. Like, yeah. Just drive around the roundabout, like, five times. <laughs> right. You, I mean, your options at this point are go faster yes. until you get somewhere you can lose them. Yep. Yes. Do that. Okay. Do that. Got it. All right. Then I'm going to need you to roll dexterity drive. And it's going to be an opposed check. Okay. I am going to also roll dexterity drive. Uh, <laughs> uh, you uh, keep in mind you have a specialty yep. in van. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so that's one extra dice. One extra dice. Marvelous. Marvelous. Yes. Excellent. Tell me how many successes you get. You need to beat. Three. I got three successes and two crits. One crit on a hunger die. Okay, so, so a crit is only two tens. Yes. So I got two tens. And one of the tens is a hunger die. One of the tens is a hunger die, and then the other three no. are just one oh, successes. Things about to get wild. <clears throat> okay, so this is what's called a messy critical. Uh huh. <laughs> what do you want to accomplish? I want to. Uh, Kill them? Lose these fools. Yeah. Ah, you want to lose these fools. Lose these fools. Fantastic. Do you know what the you best... say that out loud? You're like, time to lose these fools. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. Allow me to describe what happens. She doesn't say, let's lose these fools. You kind of still have the last little bit 
of Sense the Beast on. You're like, wow, that guy was angry. Oh, no. <laughs> and then you, like, your head swivels around to, to the front, and you're just like, huh, this is exciting. That's weird. No. <laughs> you look up front, and you hear, all of you hear, a plastic and wooden crack as the steering wheel gets two new indents in it. And you hear this demure, kind of punky, weird suburban mom go, let's lose these fools, <laughs> and then slam on the brakes. Okay. <laughs> I need everybody, please, with your hunger dice, uh, to roll um, stamina and drive. That's just hunger dice. <laughs> Good. Everyone? Uh, not you. Okay. You're right. fine. I'm fine. Nothing's going to move you from this seat right now. No. <laughs> Are we going to have a session two? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Zero successes. Okay, but nothing's a one, correct? No, no ones. Thank God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It'd be like, what happened in the first session? Everybody frenzied and died in a van. It was great. <laughs> There's well, some kind of a uh, Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What did you get? I had three successes. Three successes. Excellent. You managed to keep your seat. You're fine. You're strapped in. You get your seat belts on if it wasn't on before real quick. Yeah. I have no successes. Okay, cool. You're bouncing around this van like, j like, uh, uh, let's see. Bouncing around this van like, ah, like a napkin when you leave the window open. Can yep. I try to like help her pin her down? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Mm. Uh, roll dex athletics, please. Okay. Uh, that's not going to work. Actually, out strength much. athletics. We'll do strength athletics. Okay. Uh, it's still only three days, so. Oh, three successes. Three successes, yes. You absolutely like As soon as she starts to lift up out of the seat, because here's what happens you say, let's lose these fools, and then stomp. Something in you is just like, this is my job. Mm -hmm. Fuck these guys. Mm -hmm. You slam on the brake and you hear one of them go, holy shit! <laughs> and two of them managed to veer off, but the one in the middle, Mr. T Mr. Canadian Tuxedo, <laughs> just hits the back. Who would like to roll a dumb luck? <laughs> he hits the back and I'm like, my backpack! <laughs> <laughs> you would like to roll dumb luck? Right? Not, it should be Excellent. courier, yeah. Heather is rolling dumb luck? I feel like you're I sitting there going, five in that. holy shit, at the same time as the guy in the back. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my backpack! Um, three successes. Three successes, okay. The motorcycle hits the back of the van and starts to push it forward a little bit. You hear the shattering of glass, and because you're pretty much looking right out the back, you go, oh no, and move out of the way. You're like, my backpack! <laughs> and the, ma the backpack got caught on one of the, like, you know, where you put the gloves on top of the jacket? Yeah. Your backpack got caught, and he is now in the back seat. His helmet is cracked in half. Blood is streaming down his face. It smells incredible. Oh no. That's okay. Nobody's at hunger four, so nobody has to make any rolls to like control themselves. You can just be like, yep, that smells good. I'm gonna leave that right there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. So, two motorcycles are a little bit ahead of you now and kind of screech to a halt. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You're holding her down to make sure like she doesn't fly everywhere because you started lifting out of your mm -hmm. seat going like, ah, you know what? Seatbelt's not fashionable. Oh, no, 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 thank you. It gets in the way of all of my, my clothes. Accoutrement. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not, it's not an accessory for a fashion-forward no. vampire in the modern nights. I get it. So, um, <clears throat> here's how combat works. <laughs> in a van. In the middle of the road. This was just supposed to be a chase, and now it's a chase and combat. So, uh, everybody's going to give me a uh, wits alertness check. That's your initiative. Now, every, there is no real initiative. F for example, what we're was, not doing it. It wasn't initiative. alertness, right? Awareness? Alertness or awareness, awareness, I'm awareness. sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, alertness is, again, old, older editions of Vampire still click clack <laughs> on my brain. Do we include hunger for this? You do include hunger for this, yes. Oh, no, I'm, uh, yes. No, 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 you don't. Okay. Nope. 
Uh, this isn't an initiative tracker like in some other systems. Everything happens at once. You're all going to tell me what you do, and then we'll describe it cinematically. Can you crit uh, on this? Yeah, yeah, 10 still count. Yep. Four. Do ones count for anything? No. No? Okay. Or sorry, yes. So they count for double if there's more than one. Oh, correct. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Eight successes? Yes. You could do whatever the fuck you want first. <laughs> Great. I only have okay. one success. There's usually not an order. You're going first. <laughs> Excellent. So everything kind of happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. Combat, you can kind of figure out who's going to win after three turns. Mm -hmm. We're doing a three and out because we don't need to spend an entire thing for combat. We'll all describe it cinematically and we'll all participate in that description. All right? So I'm going to roll there. Thing this that was this this is incredible. Okay, not great. What'd you get? I had one success. One. 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 All of them. Good. Eight. Excellent. <laughs> um, so I'm going to describe. We're going to go in reverse order. So the person with the lowest initiative is going to describe first, and then you get a chance to react. Okay. Sound good? Yep. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman in the back of the van is bleeding. This is. Blood, but it's blood richer than any of you have ever smelled. And he cracks his neck and looks around. And then you see fur start to grow out of his neck. Oh, fuck, it's Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Oliver says, like, out loud. Because Oliver, <laughs> Oliver has a specialty. Encrypteds. Encrypteds. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. You've heard of lupines. Lupines? And you've heard, yep, you've heard that in a lot of the wilderness areas, the lupines run fairly no, rampant no, because no, there's no, a lot no, of wooded no, areas. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yes. So what do you do? You can act at any time and you can jump in. So uh, this person starts to change into something. The fuck is this? Firewolves! <laughs> They're real? What? <laughs> what would you like to do? I would like to get out of the van. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to jump in? You've got eight successes. Or drive, drive faster. Must go faster. <laughs> Must go faster. Right. I'd like to try to push him out of the van then. That's a good idea. I like that plan. That is a good plan. Okay, you're going to try to push him out of the van. Uh, just pop open the back. Get the fuck out. I want to gun it. I'm just yep, like, you're just going to gun it? Especially for like one of those bikes, maybe I can like snag them a little bit. <laughs> I guess yeah, yeah. I can help. Yep. Can I help Heather push him? Absolutely. Out? You 100% can. And that is the smartest thing that you could probably do in this moment. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but there's a man turning into a dog and I'm freaked out. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> she yes. can pick you up by the ankles and throw you back to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's and, scary. And uh, uh, you gibber, what, what action would you like to take? While gibbering, that's a free action. Uh, I am completely helpless in this situation. Okay. You've never seen one. No. Mm. No. Nope. nope. You've just heard of them. They're very bad. Yes. You're they don't like us. No. This is a whole other level of not liking us than I was prepared for. Correct. Yes. Uh, so just, you know, behind the curtain a little bit, uh, without that uh, messy critical, they were just supposed to chase you around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then... But one's in your van now. Cool. All right. So strength athletics for both of the people trying to push out of the van. Drive and dex for uh, our dice, right? person. What's that? Hunger dice. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. On pre pretty much hunger dice count for everything except what, initiative, initiative and like willpower checks. Okay. okay. I have yep. a suggestion for Cam. Uh, maybe make sure the blood doesn't get all over yourself. Because the man is bleeding. It's true. Actually. Yeah, Tremere. Can I? Uh huh. Like, something unfortunate has happened. <laughs> I'm going to give you one opportunity to not do that. Is that really bad? That, Let's that find seems out. Bad. Please roll a frenzy check. How do I do that? Cool. Whoo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've never actually interacted with. Yep. Yeah. No, nope. that's what we're doing. Yep. Uh, you reflect the blood you drink. Uh -huh. Bloods have humor. Uh, blood has humors and things like that. Different moods taste differently, and sometimes if you drink enough of th the blood from people who are melancholic, sad, you will then become sad. 
many Toreador, who are the kind of like artistic clan. There you go, the circulatory system. Uh, there's a cheat sheet that you have for it. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> I just gave you cheat sheets for pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they're based on the four humors. Now, if a vampire drinks the blood of another supernatural creature, a whole bunch of other stuff happens. Werewolves are angry all the time, and your mousy, very good looking uh, uh, blood wizard that's sitting in the back just went, ah, whoop, and just <laughs> ate some. So we're going to do a frenzy check. Okay. Uh, give me one second, I need to look that up. What is this guy? Yep. <laughs> yeah. What is this? <laughs> oh, I don't like it. You're about to do uh, bath salts. <laughs> you just like you just you just ate a Tide Pod. <laughs> uh, laced with cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. You're you're about to write the best screenplay that's ever been written. <laughs> oh, sick. Yeah. The, the whole modern constellation classic. of uppers, downers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give me just one second. I just need to look this up. I was not. <laughs> Four acres of. You are now Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. You are on the road. In a we car. can't. We can't uh, stop anybody, here. This is can, werewolf country. Can folks help me look? Uh, frenzy. If you have a book with you, yeah, it's frenzy. All right, so we found the frenzy, frenzy rules, and we're going to roll that at the beginning of the next episode. Thank you very much for joining us for this evening of Not a Drop to Drink, A Tale of Vancouver Island by Night. Tune in next episode to find out what the hell happens. I'm curious to see what the hell happens. Thank you very much to the players for playing with me this evening. I am looking forward very much to the next session. And in order for us to do things like this, in order for me personally to have the opportunity to do things like this to my, for my friends, <laughs> is because of you. So check out the Patreon at Patreon backslash Loading Ready Run. Check out all the content on YouTube, uh, YouTube backslash Loading Ready Run and YouTube backslash Loading Ready Live. Uh, check out the website. Pretty much if you put Loading Ready Run into Google, stuff's gonna come up. And if you wanna support them, you absolutely should. Twitch is also very good. Twitch.com, twitch.tv, backslash loading ready run as well. Have fun cutting that. Bye.